And here is the first video from the new Tech Yes Studio revamped. If you haven't seen the build already, then I'll put the link up here. It was pretty crazy, all the steps we went through and just to get a new backdrop and cable managed stuff and fix things up. And we did have some cool props in between and new posters that are new to the studio. I'm really excited about it. It was a really cool thing and it's just re-energized Tech Yes City. But with that aside, we've got an Address the Yes episode nine for you guys where you guys ask the questions and I do my best. So let's get on with the first question here from Tony Barden. He asks, any plans on a video showing the new Ryzen 3000 CPUs on older X370 motherboard? When it comes to stuff like an older X370, for example, I already know what the verdict is going to be. And that is, especially with the Tai Chi, it's gonna be fine for the 12 core. And even the 16 core, I'm guessing, will be fine on that motherboard. And the reason being is because they're much more power efficient than they were in the first gens. And when we got the first gens in, you could draw around from memory around 140 watts up through the VRMs on those things. And I know the 12 core I've got here, when you overclock that to 4.3 gigahertz, that's drawing about the same power through it. So those X370 boards, especially the high end ones, they were engineered for you know about 200 watts at least going through those boards. So they're really engineered for high throughput. Now, in terms of lower end B350s, lower end X370 motherboards, yeah, you're gonna be careful with that because they'll overheat. But basically, if the eight core first gen CPUs weren't holding up on those X370 motherboards, then the answer is gonna be the same with the new 12 core and especially the 16 core, that's not gonna hold up overclocked on those uh, older X370 motherboards. So pretty much, check out the reviews on the X370 motherboards. And if, it's that, if that's the one you wanna get and use it for the new Matisse CPUs, then all you have to do is check if it'll handle that uh, 1800X overclocked and it's just drawing a lot of power through it. So that's the answer I already have. And I mean, if you guys really wanna see me do that, I can do it, but for me, I already know the answer. And that's kind of like, that's probably why it's stopping me doing kind of some of that content, if that makes any sense. Next question we got is from Reed H. He says, I'm really curious to see what AMD and Adobe do with Premiere optimizations going forward. Saw the Epos Vox and Wendell at level one. They got some nice results from Vegas 64. So if you guys don't know, Reed's referring to Adobe optimizations where they work really well with Intel. Like Intel CPUs do really good in uh, Adobe Premiere Pro because it's optimized for that CPU architecture. And it's not just the little things, like the final render time is only a little bit of the story, especially for a guy like me who's editing 4K video footage straight from the camera through Premiere Pro. And it's it, like, I'm gonna give Premiere Pro props and also I hate it at the same time because they got such a good video editing program that I can't get used to other programs because I'm so used to it, it saves me a lot of time. But on the other side of the fence, uh, it, you know, they just keep the same formula and they keep milking you every month with the fees and there's still mistakes and bugs that just exist and they don't get fixed even like years later. It's, it's it's a weird thing with Adobe. I mean, people hate Microsoft, but damn. I mean, at least Microsoft eventually gets around to fixing things. Next up, Aurelian Etini. He says, a new video. You talk about FP with Luke, float plane. That's uh, float plane. Does this mean there is a change to see you there? Um, I talked about float plane with Luke over at um, Computex earlier in the year. I think a few other creators spoke with him about that as well. Uh, I did say I was on board to join the platform because of course, anything that the viewers like or anything that's a better opportunity for Tech Yes City, I'd like to take it. Um, Luke's a really good person as well. Like he's really down to earth. There's nothing that he hid from me or anything like that. He explained everything on the table about what Float Plane's about. Seems like a pretty good platform, but in terms of me and jumping on Float Plane, there's no confirmed date. I only spoke to Luke at Computex and we basically uh, just brainstorm some ideas and stuff like that. So my, I said I'd be on board to come on board. Uh, so the offer's there, but I also asked Luke, which segues into the next question perfectly. And uh, that is from Brody Bunter. He says, you and Steve from Hardware Unbox need to take on Luke and Linus for Scrapyard Wars. Let's see if they can handle the hustle and benchmark kings. Uh, man, I've been challenging like behind the scenes, Linus and Luke uh, for a long time with uh, Scrapyard Wars. I mean, I've, I've been keen to make it happen anywhere in the world, any budget, any rules, I'm down for it. Except like, of course, clout rules where he uses his clout to get free parts. That's kind of like not a scrapyard anymore. 
But uh, yeah, my offer's always on the table. Um, you know, I just, they just keep dodging me, man. So I'm hoping one day they'll accept the challenge and it would just make some epic content for the viewers. Next up, Ed Harding says, no method is stupid if it works, and if it doesn't work, well, the card was broken anyway. He's referring to the uh, heat gun method I used recently when I was trying to fix graphics cards, uh, where one of them did come back to life. And that's my thinking exactly, right? If it didn't work out and it wasn't fixed anyway, well, yeah, the card was broken anyway. It's going in the bin. Or, of course, if it's a high value card, as we did with Taiwan, then if you are going through Asia or you know a friend in Asia and you can post it over to him for cheap, then definitely think about taking those graphics cards to the service repair centers in Taiwan, where I did a video, I'll put the link up here for you guys, where we actually took a few high value graphics cards back to Taiwan and they fixed them uh, in Gigabyte's case for free because they're still technically under warranty. And then in MSI, they fixed it for like 20 bucks or something. That was, it was really good experience. So there's that option. And then there's the heat gun option if you've got nothing else to lose. Uh, next up here, we've got ScullyMD1983 says, I love your content because of your thermal paste vid. I'm going to invest in that Kingpin cooling thermal paste pretty soon. I've been using the Noctua stuff forever and it's, it's time for a change and get better temps in my overclocking. Uh, yeah, like the Kingpin cooling stuff, I did the recent video. A lot of people were complaining there wasn't the thermal grizzly uh, hydronaut in there. And uh, I, I did have a tube, but like legit, that person who gave me that tube, the paste was just empty. And like I got, I got trolled because I was looking forward to putting that paste up against, uh, especially the Kingpin cooling, which turned out to be the best thermal paste around because I saw in the previous overclocking competition I went to, everybody was using that Kingpin cooling stuff. And um, yeah, it ended up being like a couple of degrees better. And now the stuff, the thing is with that, uh, thermal paste is yeah if you're overclocking and you're trying to get the absolute best for a daily overclock out of your cpu whatever it is a 3900x or a 3700x or a 9900k for example then some thermal paste like that could make the difference uh, just that little bit so it is worth it if it's worth it next up tory 29 says seven minutes and 24 seconds i think the latest version of starcraft which is the same as the remastered version minus the HD graphics still has LAN capability. And if it doesn't simply download an older version of the game, which is freeware nowadays after all. CSGO and CS Source also support LAN. And also I can concur with Command and & Conquer. And he's referring to the previous episode where we talked about uh, LAN games because I love playing games over local area network where the latency is just instant. Uh, I remember Age of Empires used to have the feature as well and it was so much fun. Uh, I miss the uh, days of newer titles coming out and they have LAN support. So I'm hoping they bring it to some of these other games that come out, like especially if they bring out Age of Empires 4, I'd love to see them have uh, somehow integrate a LAN capability that would just make that game so epic. One can only hope, but thanks for those suggestions, Tori. Next up, we've got Demon Flare. He says, I hope the new Navi will install drivers automatically on Windows like Nvidia. And I actually didn't check for that. I believe they do, but they install the older drivers, like they're pretty old. Um, so you will want to update, of course, to the latest Adrenaline drivers to get the fixes and also get the uh, performance uplifts in some of the titles. Next up from Sam Borton, he says, please keep calling it the Tech Yes Hustle with a copyright symbol. And don't worry, the Tech Yes Hustle copyright is never going anywhere. I mean, look what we've done around Tech Yes City, all the hustle every day, all the parts hunts every month, the hustle is real. And you guys are loving it as well as the, I just find it's just a growing community as well. It's, it's really cool. I love this community. I'm gonna keep doing what I do in that regard, don't worry. Next up, Dry Feeta. He says, really looking forward to the yes Yesumentary. Yeah, uh, hashtag yes at LTX. No, yes wasn't at LTX. It was too late, Luke said, for me to go. But anyway. Uh, really looking forward to it. Yes, that is coming. We got some good stuff in the pipe works, but man, it just gets so busy around here. And basically, I'm for the most part, I'm a one man band. We do have Yusuf, he helps out from time to time with the video editing, but it's a real big grind to stay on top and just stay above water. But the Yes Humanity is coming. I do promise it, just like Darth Jar Jar, that got delivered. I will deliver in the end. But don't definitely hold out on your meals for this yes humanity to come anytime soon. Mr. Mustachius, he says, Tech Yes, I just want to let you know that uh, you've been my favorite tech tuber for quite some time. Been around before you did the name change to Tech City and back. Whoa, that, thanks man, that, that means a lot to me. That's actually a long time. Uh, there's just something special about your content and what you focus on that put your leaps ahead of the big wigs like Linus or Jay's. Your used price performance hunts are also entertaining. Please keep up the great work and cheers from America. 
thanks for watching, brother. I uh, really appreciate the kind words. And man, I just do what I do, and that's the main thing about the content around here. I don't wanna change it for no one. I just wanna keep doing what I enjoy doing. And of course, it just seems to be, like I used to enjoy new parts a lot more, but like Zen 2 was really good, but the graphics cards are kind of boring. And that's sort of like pushing me more towards use brass performance hustle even more lately, uh, even though the new stuff has been coming out in droves with Zen 2. So, but thanks for that, man. The content's just, it just keeps coming, man. Don't worry. Andrew, 1977 AU, he says, I recently subscribed to your channel, loving your content, well done. I'm looking forward to the Mars doco. Yeah, I really wanna get that done. I've actually, to be honest, I'm trying to source out the remaining Mars cards because with that 780 Ti acquired, the Mars 780 Ti, that is the rarest of the rarest. I have the only one apparently in existence. So well, after, you know, there, there's the Mars GTX 680 as well. And apparently there's one out there in the wild. And apparently I know who it is, but I don't know who it is and I'm not gonna say it anymore because yeah, anyway, it's a big twisted tale. If I end up like basically I've got to collect a few more things and then I'm ready to shoot even without the 680 Mars, which I think is gonna be impossible to obtain. Next up here, we've got Mitch uh, McAver. He says, don't worry about the disapproval of the heat gun. People don't understand that the GPU will go on the bin unless this method works. Obviously, you wouldn't be doing this on a 1080 Ti. Also, it's going to be exciting to see AMD uh, parts uh, use price performance in your hustles. Yes, that's coming too. Man, Mitch, you I'm just mid midway, I'm gonna say, Mitch, I just agree with everything, brother. <laughs> so we'll keep you on that. It wasn't until Ryzen was released that any secondhand AMD parts were worth using in builds over secondhand Intel chips. Welcome to the used price performance party, AMD. And that's a funny thing, because in Australia, I think maybe not too many people took up the first series, the first gen. Um, like definitely second gen, there's, there's a bit more out there. And then third gen, I think a lot of people are buying third gen on the market at the moment. But like, I can't find a whole lot in terms of first gen parts for Ryzen here in Australia. I'd imagine US would be a lot better um, I'm going over to Japan soon, so hopefully I can check out uh, used Ryzen deals over there, but it seems to be a bit of a drought in terms of first gen stuff, and I'm really looking forward to getting some cheap A320s, cheap B450 motherboards and stuff like that, but it's just not showing up anywhere. But anyway, next up we've got Steven Space Eck. He says, uh, excellent choice on the Fidelio L2 headphones there, Brian. My brother has a pair and they are well made, good looking and sound pretty good. Real hi-fi, not your usual beats by Drake crap and so on. And I agree, man, like Fidelio's, there's just something about them that's magical. Uh, they got the weight, the weight's really good, they're super comfortable, and the sound is just that balance for a headphone. Uh, some headphones I try on, and honestly, they're, I just feel like they're too good. I can hear too many nuances, and like, yeah, it's just weird to explain, but the L1s and the L2s, they really do it for me. Philips designed a phenomenal uh, headphone there. Anyway, next up we got Sweet VP Gaming. He says, hustling. Praise the hustling, I agree too. Next up, Raphael Gabicki says, props Brian for the timestamps. We will be adding in some more timestamps in this one too. And next up, we've got uh, Gwil Hermi Olivier. He says, where is the one and Jewel X79 review? That's actually a good suggestion. I only just saw this now and uh, I will take a look at that since Windows 10, something I've noticed over the last three years especially is when I did Junicron originally, it kind of sucked. But then when I looked at Jewel uh, CPUs, I forgot when I looked at it, but I recently looked at it. Uh, that's right, with um, Darth Jar Jar. It was so much better. It, things were running a lot better, and I think that's due partly to thank to Threadripper and stuff like that, where the pushes in the industry and Windows and optimizations went to dual CPU kind of configurations, in that Ryzen technically is two, you know, like CPUs and stuff under the die. So the dual X79 Wannans may be worth a look and it may be some seriously good performance. So I will order one of those boards in and I will order uh, two Xeons for that board in. Just let me know what the best price performance uh, Xeon V2s would be for that board and I'll check it out. Next up here, we've got Blizz Klaus Deity he says, I want that tech, yes, love and pillow. Uh, you can get it. We got the merch store link in the description below. And uh, basically I think I just bought the case because the pillow adds extra to the shipping. So I bought the case and then I um, bought a cheap pillow from my local uh, store like Target. And then we just put the pillow in there. It's a standard size. And then yeah, we got the Tech Yes Love and Pillow. 
And also there's some insanely good merch like the Tech Yes Lovin' shirt and the Hustlers Process shirt too. And then we've got uh, Deanne Anderson, he says, what other hobbies do you have outside tech stuff? I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I love driving my car at nighttime. Uh, I got a convertible at the moment and just popping the uh, hood down on the Gold Coast where I live, it's basically, I think it's like some of the best weather in the world. It rains 50 days of the year. I absolutely love driving my car, listening to music. It's a weird hobby. I don't even know if you'd call it a hobby or whatnot, but I love doing that. And so it's funny because it matches up sometimes with hustling where people call me and they wanna buy a PC and they're like, I can't get to you. And I'm like, look dude, I'll deliver it. And a lot of people at times, I'll call you after hours, like after the, the retail stores close because they can't build a PC or whatever, they'll call you up and they'll be like, look, I need a PC. And you know, your one's for sale, I wanna grab it. And that happens sometimes and I'm more than happy to deliver that PC. And um, they actually, sometimes they give you an extra 20 bucks for the delivery. And I just, I really love doing that. So um, that's some cool stuff. Really love driving. Uh, other than that, I kind of like, I don't know, just watching uh, drama on Netflix and Stan. Like I've got subscriptions to both of those and really enjoying, um, like I watched The Loudest Voice and that was like, some of the parts on that, man, that was so funny, some of that stuff. So uh, there was that, there's Stranger Things season three, I've got to start on that too. I've just been waiting for the whole season to drop and then I'm gonna binge it. I'm also watching Power at the moment, uh, that's pretty good. There's so many good drama on and I just, I love doing that as well. And of course, playing uh, some video games from time to time, I do like playing my Dota too. So hopefully that answers that question. Uh, how about you, uh, DM? What do you enjoy doing besides the tech stuff? And all you guys out there, let us know What's your other hobbies? Have you got similar hobbies to me? I uh, love reading your thoughts and opinions, as well as the hustling as well. I love hustling. That's kind of like, but it's tech related, I guess. So. And then last up, we've got EO Ruz. He says, mid-range cans over $100. I'd say mid-range cans is anywhere between 50 to 80 bucks. Damn, Brian. Damn, Brian. Damn, Brian. Damn, Brian. Damn, Brian. Um, I don't know what to say. Like. I, I don't do audio that much. Like I know how to test the stuff, but as I've said in the past, I'm not an audio file. So like I'll do the testing on sound cards and stuff like that. I'll do the testing on onboard audio. And um, I know how to test like headphones and stuff like that for all the things to look out for in terms of the ranges and frequencies. But like my passion is not with audio. And that's the thing. That's, the, that's what differs me from a true audio file is I'm not, passionate about it and audio files obviously are that's their sort of passion and their tech related hobby so when I just splat out like yeah mid-range cans I'm thinking a hundred bucks that's that's what a mid-range can is and I'm sorry if I'm wrong about that but that aside I hope you guys enjoyed episode 9 of address the yes if you guys have those questions that need to be answered in depth then be sure to pop them in the description in the comments section below and we're going to obviously skip the question of the day in this one because <laughs> We answered all the questions in Address the Yes. It's kind of like a self-contained series that keeps going here on the channel. And with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. And also let us know what you're thinking of the new studio if you haven't already. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.